Hi, I'm Clay Carlino. I'm not an electrician, but I am a guy who every now and then needs to wire stuff. This information is not intended to say that this is the right way to do stuff. It is only intended to show you how I'm doing it. This is an air compressor that was given to me by Mike. Mike, I am forever in your debt. I am eternally grateful. You are wise beyond your years. You're very attractive, satisfying to women. But in order to hook it up, I need to uh, hook up a 220 outlet so I can plug it in. We are going to branch off of this line here, which goes to the dryer. So before I do anything, I'm going to shut off the power here. And uh, I got one of these little probe thingies so that you can just see. Right now, there's, there's power all over the place. So let's fix that. So here's my breaker box. And you can see here, dryer is 12 and 14. Uh, something to note about uh, 220 lines is that they usually take up two slots in your breaker box. And you can see that the breakers are joined together here rather than being two separate switches. And so I'm just going to turn that off. And boom. Back to my switch box over here. Now if we check, yeah, look at that, no power. That's great, because you know what? I do not want to get bit by 220. Um, that's, that's just not safe. So never, ever, 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 ever work on electrical stuff, especially 220 lines with the power on. So here's my box and I'm going to mount it and uh, it actually gets mounted this way which uh, bugs my OCD because they have the logo printed upside down. I think that's because uh, codes changed at some point and the molds didn't. But uh, yeah, whenever, whenever you install an outlet the uh, the standard now is that the ground pin should be on top so that if for some reason some kind of bit of metal falls down between the plug and the outlet, it's going to hit the ground first rather than going across the, uh, the two powered terminals. So uh, yeah, that's going to bug me that, uh, that the writing is upside down, but it's going to be way better because this cord has the ground on top so that's going to look great. So I need to pop out one of these little uh, holes here so that I'll have a place for the wire to go through and I'm going to see if I can do that while holding the camera. One of these days I'm going to invest in a tripod. Whole new kind of video once I have a tripod. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to mark where the holes go and go like that, like that, and like that. So if you're going to be screwing anything into a cement wall or cinder block wall, you're going to need some of these. These are Tapcon screws and you're going to need one of these, hammer drill. Now what's nice is that this box of screws actually came with a bit. You see how the tip of that, it's got that rib going around the front. Okay, and the way that the hammer drill works is it has an action in there that not only spins the drill, but it also punches it forward very, very fast. And uh, it breaks up the masonry as it's drilling so it can get through it. Okay, we're drilling holes. I was gonna show you uh, taking the knock out here, but you know, it looks like this already got a nice little hole in there. So I'm gonna use that one. Okay, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Bunch of schmutz in here. I don't want the schmutz in there. Just seems like it would be better if it didn't have schmutz. So I'm gonna install one of these to uh, to retain the wire. And it just goes up through here. There we go. There. This is 10-2 line, which has two leads plus a ground. So uh, even though it's got three wires, they call it two-strand. Um, but I, I will admit, I didn't do any research. I just talked to the guy at the hardware store who seemed to know what he was talking about. So I'm going to trust that this is what I need for this project. So the ground has a little connection in here which you probably can't see but it's got a screw terminal that goes through a hole. These things need a little hook to go around a screw so I'm just going to go ahead and make that hook out here. I think I'm going to work over on this side first. Isn't that just a little bit more? Come on, there we go, yay! It's in there, woo -hoo. There, and then I'll kind of bend that around like that. Bam, that's one wire connected. I'm gonna do the other wire, but you don't need to watch. So I just noticed that there's a black lead here and a red lead here, and I, I know it probably doesn't matter, but my OCD just can't allow me to leave the uh, the black line going to the red and the black line here going to the white, so I I'm going to switch it. Okay, so I've got all the wires attached here, and I've stripped the wires on the other end of the uh, 10 gauge here, so uh, I'm going to do a continuity test. I've got my my multimeter here. Yeah, we're just going to make sure that we are actually connected everywhere where we're supposed to be. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yes, I'm holding the phone with my mouth. And that's good. You know, we want to make sure that the ground wire just goes to the box. And, yeah, that's good. All right. What I don't want is for there to be a short from this lead to this lead. Nope. No shorts. No short to ground there. No short grit to ground there. So... All right, good. So this is pretty awesome, this uh, this box that I got here. It uh, even comes with its own retainers here, you know, the wire retainers. So that goes right on there. And then you screw it in right here. I got these placed in here like this. And, uh, and then we just screw that down right there. So these screws go in here like this. And then the wire goes in there, and then I tighten those screws down, and that holds everything in place. So here you can see I've got everything wired up, and I've got the hot leads going to the contacts, the ground going to the middle, and then I tested continuity to make sure that nothing was shorted from any of the contacts to the ground or to each other and also made sure that the wires going to the leads have uh, good conductivity. So always good. Hey, everything's wired up and as you can see I have the uh, the socket here held to the wall. I've got the uh, Tapcon started just a little bit but uh, these things have a uh, 5 uh, hex head which uh, I think also works with an 8 millimeter socket. Uh, so I've got my electric impact wrench, not to be confused with a hammer drill, kind of similar. 
So I'm going to see if this works better. That went great. There we go. Yeah. And easy peasy. Now I'm going to put this on here. I think everything fits. So, yeah, I put this on here and I insert the screw. Yeah, that's it. And I'll have a 220 outlet. Look at that. Yeah. Turn on the uh, the breaker. Didn't pop. That's a good sign. Okay, and I can plug in the air compressor. And let's see if this does something. <laughs> that that is a working air compressor look at that